welcome to an Automation Professionals Programming Guide. Today we're going to go through the programming of a simple AV system. I'm going to try to start uh, from the top down to kind of give you an idea of uh, how much is involved uh, using these modules. Uh, first of all, I'm going to assume that everyone knows how to add devices and uh, program in general. Uh, so essentially here we're just going to do a four um, a four room multi room amp just a four by one hundred Crestron amp and you'll see everything's kind of filled out there to basic proportion I'm not using the uh, source um, adjustments there um, I have for AV I have I have a remote here so we're just gonna I have a bunch of stuff here but we're, let's just go with a simple remote here where is it here we're gonna use the We'll do the HR150 and I'll also go through the uh, TSR302. Down here I have all of the simple IR devices, although on my system I'm kind of bridging them to an Adagio system, so we're going to uh, scratch that for now. Uh, there's an NSB player, an iPod dock, and so on. Anyways, I'm just going to assume you all know how to add your devices. Um, basically, uh, from the top down, we're going to start with um, the names of the room. So I have everything pre-located to uh, room names. So this is where you load the icons for all the predefined rooms. And there's also some custom rooms down here for ones that aren't predefined. And you can take over any of these rooms uh, and put your own names and icons in anyway. So like for a family room you can select your icon, whatever you feel fit. Um, the name uh, here I got some predefined locations plus you can just put in custom and put in your own latitude and longitude uh, and here's where you um, put in all your names and I predefined them with just the basics and also and we'll get to this the uh, location of the room whether it's on the uh, basement main floor second third or outside um, and so that's how you define the room names of the program and it's global so if there's uh, family room lighting and family room shades and family room uh, AV if you adjust it here the name or the icon it updates everywhere so you don't have to do it per section so to speak um, now we're gonna go down to the audio video section which is what we're here for uh, here we have the manager uh, which there's some conduit stuff at the top here you don't have to worry about any of that stuff this is where the room names kinda get funneled in uh, here are the uh, connections for the multi-room amps. So this works for the Swamp 8 channel, the 6 channel, or any other kind of amp. Uh, it, for, for volume, since some don't have analog volume, I have volume up and volume down just to control it that way as well. Um, so depending on what amp you're using, uh, you can use either or. Obviously the Crestron and amps always use this, the analog volume. Uh, down here, Here's where you select your uh, the amp type. So I'm use, actually using an Adagio and an Ethernet bridge and wrote a program on that to communicate back and forth since you can't actually add it as a native slave. So anyways, down here you have the 4x100. So you'd select 4x100. This is my program, so I'm not going to change it now. But that's what you do in the case of using the 4x100 that we have here. Here we have up to 24 uh, multi-room uh, names. Um, so in here you can fill out uh, whichever rooms you have going off of and this is obviously located uh, to the outputs of the amplifier so that you would obviously match it up. So in my case I have the kitchen, the gym, the master bed, the master ensuite, the patio and the side exterior uh, and those are all running off the Adagio multi room amp. Up here I have the receiver rooms which are rooms running off the receivers whether it's main zone, second zones or however you're doing it uh, and this is my family room that's running off an Onkyo which we'll get to in a second so that's basically the manager uh, uh, module right there um, and then here I wrote a module and you'll understand why in a second just for plain old multi rooms uh, or sorry um, audio only rooms uh, so I, you can just do five and six here. You don't have to space it out here. I just did it for the sake of um, having one through eight filled out, and then it just deleting whatever's there. But it doesn't matter. You can use it however you'd like. They're all uh, signable any which way. Here you have 
if you f feel like you want to fill it out for direct access to these commands, you have the room on and off, toggle, volume, sleep modes, the source selects, and feedback, and so on. And also uh, the media transport. So this, and I'll get to that in a second too, this will just control whatever source you're connected to. So I'm just going to clean that up. Uh, now we'll just go into the devices. So here under the AV devices section, we're going to well, first we'll look at the displays. If you have any modules for RS-232 or RS-232 modules, IP modules, whatever you could put them here just to keep it nice and clean. I'm just using IR for my TVs. Uh, they're all Samsung, so they work fine anyways. Um, here uh, is the device module um, that you fill out so the program knows how to communicate with your TV. So you have power on and off as well as just discrete power and you can um, enable this uh, to ha have a power toggle uh, button in the the, the GUI um, if you want to have your own control of power there but this will just control it on and off down here um, is just the transport command so these are just hooked into the module or the IR control file or whatever you want um, and so you fill out whatever exists and there's auxiliary commands down here too for something that's not predefined and you enable them on the left so uh, auxiliary exists, uh, play exists, stop exists and so on and this tells the program what commands exist and what doesn't um, and this also uh, makes the routing very easy uh, for controlling and you'll see that too. Uh, input selection here's where you uh, obviously just hook in the commands for discrete inputs uh, and you can put in whatever uh, exists. Uh, here you can choose the type of power. So here we just have discrete power and power toggle. If there is no, obviously it's not that great if it has, uh, no, it doesn't have discrete power, but that's an option. And it does keep track of it inside the module at bet the best it can. Um, and here is the display ID. So you can have up to 16 displays uh, that I have it currently in this, these uh, modules here. Um, so that's just identifying each display to a number. Here's the auxiliary icons uh, for the ones that you, I um, showed you earlier there, so the smart hub tools and so on. So you can choose from a whole array of icons or whatever you want to choose and then the name down here. So that's how you program in your display device and you do that for each room. Receiver, same thing. So right now I'm using IP control of an Anki over say, uh, preamp here. And here you can see, uh, well, it's just uh, the, the IP module here. There's nothing special there. You all should know how to set that up. Here's the same kind of uh, device module uh, that I just showed you with all the commands here the me uh, for menu and so on. Uh, the input selection here so you can um, send out the commands when you program it in the uh, AV room, which we'll get to soon. Uh, the power on and off and so on, discrete power, uh, the type, and this one says numerical power on, but I really that's really just needed for the um, like uh, Cisco boxes that you can do power and numeric for uh, power on, but we'll see that soon. Uh, once again, the uh, ID for the receiver, and um, and then obviously the auxiliary down here too. So I just did a bunch of. Uh, audio modes here for the receiver so you can change them out and you can see them in the program uh, and down here they say the icons and the names as like before. Uh, video switchers, so I have a key digital 4x4 here so there's the module, I'm using an 8x8 module but it works either way. Uh, I actually wrote this uh, myself and modified it um, and the uh, here's the device uh, controller module for the video switcher so basically you have an analog out switcher uh, good for um, DM switchers and so on and then discrete output for um, key digital and uh, whatever other ones you want to use that just have discrete commands uh, and you do that per room so once again you just put in the ID of the video switcher so everything's ID'd here and uh, say with the audio switchers, I'm not using it in here. If you had like a composite uh, or sorry, an RC, like it's just an analog audio switcher or what have you or anything like that, you can control it here. Same type of uh, module as the video switcher. So those are up to 16 by 16. Uh, I can make them bigger, but that's just how big I made them for now. Uh, I personally haven't done anything over 16 by 16 in a single uh, video switcher. So it should be sufficient. And when it becomes not, I'll just modify it to be bigger. 
uh, what media devices here's the modules there's one for the AM FM radio and the XM radio um, video sources here you have uh, everything filled out uh, like here's the uh, like a home theater computer I'm running uh, discrete power on programs discrete power the ID so you have a ton of sources here pretty much up to six on each one of them so uh, cable box blu-ray Apple TV and so on and so it's just predefined uh, inputs. You can put them anywhere. You can put a cable box on XM2 and just use that as a, an ID if you want. I just figured the predefined list makes everything look a lot cleaner. Uh, the device controller, same as you've seen in the display and the receiver. Uh, so you fill that out with the auxiliary on the bottom. And here you have a page layout because on the touch panel it will have different uh, page layouts. So here's a default media layout which I'll show you uh, later. Um, and everything just populates automatically. You do nothing. There's the media player object for NSP radio, autonomics, uh, iPod docs, XM radio, and so on and so forth. And then I put a bunch of essentially placeholders for custom pages. Uh, like if you did a CD player that you want to lay it out differently, or an Xbox and PlayStation with the um, triangle buttons and so on, you can put that in there too. And it just it just redirects to another page on the UI that you can create however you'd like. Uh, and that's essentially for that. So you do that per device, and also for like Chromecast, that I, at least right now there's no control over um, the audio one. At least um, there's not controlled, which would just come up with a placeholder page with the icon saying "Please turn on device" and so on and so forth. I might add later a place you can write your own message for, but right now it's just kind of a generic "Please turn on device and enjoy" type deal. And obviously the idea there as well. And everything else is blank because there's no control. And that's all the same with the audio devices here. So like here's the uh, NSP one and there's the music player one and the media player page layout that I was talking about. And you can do other things too. If you want to have it forced to a certain input, you can put that the power on or whatever and it will pulse it when you select the source if you choose to do so. Some people like to force it to XM when they've turned a room on, but I always felt that they just leave it running and they're fine. Uh, but that's uh, completely up to you. So that's essentially all the device uh, drivers that I wrote that everything else communicates with and handles all the um, um, ev everything. So there's no you know bad signal names or whatever that suddenly page up and down is not working because you used up and down and then the symbol up and like a plus and minus uh, and another signal. Anyways, it just handles all the translation so it's uh, perfect throughout the program and you don't have to worry about any of that. Uh, so in the video zones, these are the rooms that have some AV in it. As you saw earlier with this one, you can have just audio only rooms. There's literally nothing involved other than just putting which rooms they are. And that's it. You don't do anything else. Here, it's slightly a bit more involved. So here, I'll just give you an example of this one. So this is the main AV room um, module. You don't have to worry about anything up here. That's just all conduit, so it gets all its information from everywhere else, like from the display receiver modules and so on. Uh, room control, if you want to fill that in to have uh, discrete program control, but really you can just blank that out because everything's going to be controlled through cross points anyways. There's the, the transport control, the selected uh, source, um, and the source select for audio and video, and you get the feedback there too. So here, there's a couple equipment ideas. I wish I could simplify this, but unfortunately, the way Crestron and Crosspoints work, everything needs its own little equipment ID and control ID, and they have to be put in to the module. You can't just have like a string input because that would make everything so much easier, but one day maybe. So here, you choose the equipment ID, and I have some, once again, predefined rooms. So you have receiver uh, room 1 through 16, and then 24 multi-rooms like you saw in the manager when you're naming the names. Um, and this, this is the exact same thing, it's just a different control ID for lighting and shades because you can link this to a lighting room or a shade or both and have some other cool features including uh, quick lights on and off without having to switch to a lighting section and control switch the room and control and everything, it's just all right there uh, and I'll show you that in the running program soon, plus I have another video up of the AV, uh, AV section being controlled and all its features, which I'm not going to go into today because this is about the programming side. Anyways, this is how you link it up. One day it may simplify this because since everything's funneling through that name module, 
Um, I feel I can make it so the lighting room passes back the equipment ID and that passes it to the AV room and so on. So this will still always be required the way the cross plates work, but this I may delete one day and just have it automated. However, if you do want to have it controlling a different room for whatever reason, like the family room you want to have it be controlled because there's no lights in the family room, you want to control the kitchen or something, then at least this gives you the option to do it. So maybe I'll just leave it, maybe I'll put an option in here of like follow room or just in, just select, I don't know, we'll figure that out. Uh, here you choose uh, which display, as you remember when you filled out the display module, you put uh, a discrete uh, display ID in there. So this is how you link it up. So family room is using display one, it's also using receiver one and video switcher two. Here's volume type, uh, which most of the time is going to be receiver and amplifier. But if you're doing like a guest room that's just having TV, uh, like with no multi room amp or anything like that, you can just select TV volume and the room knows that it's just going to use the volume up and down on the TV and so on. Um, and I put these here too. It's basically delay between um, the second uh, uh, row of input. So basically when you load a source, it goes display power on, receiver power on, video uh, switcher uh, input, audio switcher input, display input, receiver input, and then this delay, um, and then receiver and display input yet again, just for when things are booting up and they don't listen to the command the first time. However, little, if everything's already on, then they're gonna listen to the first row. Anyways, that's the, that's the timing. If it, it's an older Sony display or something that takes forever to listen to the input after turning on, you can adjust this to eight, nine seconds, whatever it takes to work. So that's the AV room module. Here, actually I'm gonna shift gears for a second here. I'm gonna go through this first because I think it makes more sense. Here is the the defaults for the, the uh, program. So everything is just funneling off of this unless otherwise specified. So here is the room list for your display devices. So here I have all my rooms, the receiver room and the multi-room one through six. This is for the room list. And so this is just the default. This will have every room in it and in the order you want. You can put it in any order you want um, and it will funnel to the, um, the touch panel, uh, the, the interface modules anyways. But you can modify that in the module so it's only showing certain rooms anyways. So this is just the default if you want everything running on default, which I'm doing for myself right now. This is a source list default. If things are like a big centralized system so every TV has the same sources, you can fill this in with like cable box one, two, three, Blu-ray one, whatever you want. And then you can have the rooms go off this as a default source list. And uh, um, and it makes it so much, it, it makes it a lot easier, but that's assuming that all the rooms have the same source, sources available to it. The audio is the same thing. And for my multi-room audio, it's all off the multi-room amp, so it does make sense here. So I have XM uh, Music Player 2, which I forget which one that is, but I can look and how I sign. I'm pretty sure that's the NSP, the iPod dock. This is the, or that's the Chromecast. This is the NSP, and then this is the AMFM one. And it, as I said, it's all just placeholders for the sources that I mentioned earlier. So that's that. The sources is kind of like the names here. So you have all the predefined. Uh, source names like I mentioned here you can choose the different icons so blu-ray you can choose whatever you want for the icon and so on and I kind of divvied it out to what made sense per cable box or whatever um, so that's the icon side and over here you can make the names of the um, the sources of Kojiko Cable, Apple TV, Kodi CPC, uh, Chromecast, PlayStation 3, 4, Xbox 360 and so on you can see all the icons matching down here and this makes it so you do nothing in the GUI, pro the interface project for names or icons or anything. You'll see in a second. So that's the, the, the where you input the names and the icons for that. And then here is a default source switching uh, for, like this is the video switcher. So it's a centralized video switcher. So all of them are going to have the same. So I know Apple TV 1 is going to input 2 and uh, Media Player 1 is going to input 1 on the switcher and, and so on and so forth. Um, I have an 8x8, sorry, I forgot about or 8x4. Um, so this is where you plug in what inputs on the video switcher. All right, so you don't have to do it per room. You just do it once, and everything gets your information off that, and you're done. Over here, it's the same thing with the multi room amp. So AM, FM is all on the Dodge, as you all know, will be input 1, XM2, and then here's the analog inputs. I have an iPod and 3, and so on and so forth. Um, and that's for all the, the audio um, it, on the multi-room amp. 
Uh, so that's the default. So now this makes more sense to get into here. So here is where you put in the, for this specific room, the uh, video list. So I don't have the same sources in every single room in this house. So I have it individualized. So in this room, I have these sources here. And you know what they are when you look at the names of the other program, but it's all predefined here in a drop down. So that's all you have to do for the inputs here. Audio. This one, I don't have any audio feeding to it from the multi room app, so this one is just video only. Although, if I did link them over, I could put it in here and load the default, or, um, sorry about that, um, or just put in specifics. Like, if I just want Chromecast, I would go sele uh, select Media Player 2, and then it would show this in the list of Media Player 2, uh, which was the Chromecast. Uh, here is where you do the input selection. So here, it's obviously off a, uh, a receiver, so it's only going to one. So here, if you have different inputs per source, you can go and put it Blu-rays, HDMI 2 or 4 or whatever. But here, it's just centralized, single input only, HDMI 2, done. Receiver, uh, obviously these aren't centralized inputs. Um, so here, it would have been if I didn't have some different sources, like if I did put in uh, video matrix only and then put in BD input then every source for the video would go to BD input but because I have um, the t smart TV going to TV and the um, receiver going to here or sorry the, the Wii I think that's the Wii going to the VCR input um, and uh, the media the Chromecast going to the photo input which these are just a sign it's obviously not actually the photo input um, I, I put a specific uh, inputs for the receiver on each source. So that's how you do it. And if I had audio here, it'd be the same thing. If it was a Swamp or a 6x100 uh, and, it's, and it has that uh, zone 7 and 8 uh, output or 9 and 10 on the Swamp, uh, and you, you can switch it from the Swamp, the, the multi room amp side, you can have it going to like one of these inputs. So like CD and CD and CD and CD and whatever. So you can have it all go into, or sorry, um, you can go here, the audio once, and put the uh, CD here, and then every audio source will go to CD input instead of putting it per source. But if this one's like now to game one, then you would not do that. So I'll just put this back to normal. So that's how you do the input switching for um, the receiver. Video switcher, since everything's from the default list, you do nothing here. And same with the audio switcher, I don't have one, but even if I did, it'd probably be a centralized list, so you do nothing here. And the only thing I'll show you is these rooms are identically the same. The only difference is uh, for the um, receiver, no, the audio switcher side, I'm using a TV uh, return. So here you use the default, so it's using all the uh, default inputs that I showed you earlier for all this, the multi room amps or sorry, the multi room sources, uh, but here you can use an audio return for the TV and you put that up here. So I have the audio return going to input six on the multi room amp. So then every time a video source is selected, it goes to input six because it knows it's the audio return from the TV. Um, and then you're good to go. So that's the only real difference from these other than like obviously this one has mass shades and lighting and it's obviously different display and a video switcher and so on. Anyways, that's all you have to do for that. And um, the touch panels here, I'll just go into this briefly. You don't have to touch this really at all. Like if you look at the touch panel, just look at the X panel here. Uh, where is it? X panel here. All this is just filled out by default. You have the smart graphics loaded. All the interfaces have the same smart graphics and all the same connections and so on. And you don't have to worry about any of this. It's just pre-done, nothing. Here is the... Um, um, the interface module, you don't really have to worry about this for the AV side, but this is where you would like say if it has a web browser capability like the TSW 52 or 7, the 52 series or the 60 series. Um, if it has voice recognition, you can enable that screen saver. This is basically just enabling options in the options menu. If it has a camera uh, for the TS, uh, like the 60 series TSWs, uh, you can enable that and put in a link. Um, and uh, where is it? Uh, this is the where you put whatever sections you want inside of the um, the touch panel. However, that can be universal, as you can see here. There's some defaults which we'll get to, but this you can put in the default uh, menu for the interface. And if you don't want that in the specific interface, you can just go to um, use defaults and go zero, and then 
put in global AV lighting if you just want those three sections and settings. So you don't have to have it on all interfaces, but you can without having to worry about it just by leaving it. I just do that for unless requested otherwise. Um, and the camera URL comes in from the interface transport. Like you'll see, this is the transport going to all the device uh, extenders. So controlling the screensaver and the backlight and getting the project name and the IP address and offline uh, um, offline de uh, detection and sleep wake of the screen and all this stuff. So down here you can see the uh, the uh, the VoIP uh, connections and down here is the um, the intercom and uh, I forget where the video is down here. That's the voice recognitions. That's the browser control. Anyways, it's it's oh intercom stream name and so on and so forth and enabling. So the the module handles it all. You don't have to worry about any of that. And while I'm here, I'll just show you this. There's it's for all the sections, but here you can just define the defaults in every single room from one section. So I once I, everything's predefined. Uh, so obviously X panel, I have it as touch panel 16. So here you can select which room is default for the audio video room. So if the touch panel's in the kitchen. My kitchen is multi room one, so you just select it as multi room one. So when the touch panel loads, it goes automatically to uh, kitchen um, by default. However, if you want to set that to something else, it doesn't matter. And then inside the project, you can select any room as long as it's available. So that's the defaults for the AV rooms. Uh, this is the, con the main control module. Here you can put in the device type. And the name really doesn't matter unless it's touch panel. It's how you get the, uh, it knows what project name to pull from the Crestron app. Really, it's phone and tablet in this program. Um, and the intercom information here if you want. So you can do custom name or by the room and the custom icon, custom name. And if it's um, in the extension and it's part of a SIP server, there's where you put the SIP uh, password. All the other SIP stuff is in the, the global module, which that's not part of this tutorial anyway. So onto the AV module. So here, this is where it gets all the information at the top. You don't have to touch it. Room control, uh, alarm, room control, um, everything. You don't have to touch any of this. It's already linked up with the interface. You do nothing with it. All you have to do is just because the stupid uh, drop down menu or the, the um, uh, whatever you want to call it, the, the control points that's needed for these and you can't have it just as a serial input, you have do have to go in each uh, individual uh, interface and select its, uh, its own uh, cross point ID. So once again, everything's kind of um, individualized so you just keep everything touch panel 16 on the one touch panel or one or whatever you want to do just it just makes it easier instead of having to type in your own cross point numbers and equipment IDs and remembering them and worrying that you already picked one so it's all predefined in a drop down this connects to the manager so you just have to do it twice unfortunately but that's just the way the cross points work at this point in time shade control and so on so there's nothing you have to do there and here's the room list. As I showed you earlier, the default room list, I'm just using that here. However, if you go to zero, you can create the your own room list. So you can have receiver room one and multi-room one. So this touch panel would only have the receiver room one, which is family room, and the multi-room one, which is kitchen. So this would only have two rooms. So you can do whatever you want in terms of default. That's really up to the user if they want to have the whole house in each touch panel, which most people do, or if it's a put like a like a kid's room or something like that where they don't want the kids messing with it or if they don't want the master bedroom being an option all over the house so someone can mess with the master bedroom they can block that out so just the master bedroom has access to it anyways that's how you control the um, the rooms that's available on that one interface and one other thing is uh, voice control so here's the um, uh, voice control module I am using the old one because they uh, change something, a new one that um, messed up uh, my custom modules I made for it. Um, but this one's just the factory one that you've all seen before. Um, but you'll notice that there's no other uh, voice control modules anywhere because I built it into um, the AV room modules and the lighting modules and the shade modules. So it auto populates. So you don't have to do anything other than register to um, the, uh, the Crestron API site. Um, and as you'll see here, uh, it automatically loads everything in my house. I've done nothing for this. It just automatically uh, populates. So family room, Chromecast, bathroom, uh, video for turning it off. So I made it so you can say turn off bathroom video and TV. Um, and there's whole house commands too. Um, master bed uh, or family room TV LED for the lights. 
um, kitchen airplay, kitchen Chromecast, and so on. So everything's here. You can say uh, you can adjust the volume, you can set, set the source, and you can turn it off. And I mean, this stuff may not be super new to you guys, but it's done automatically. So you don't have to touch that room module, fill out anything. It just automatically populates. So I just wanted to uh, go over that as well. Um, and so that's pretty much it in terms of the programming. As you see, everything's pretty much done for you. All the modules talk to uh, each other. All the, the code's done. All the features are there uh, that you see in the other video, which I'll put some um, underneath. And um, and on the VT Pro side, you can see here the AV zone. It's just all um, done for you. You don't fill out anything. Every single job can have the same interface. So like here the room sources that list gets automatically populated with the names and the icons and the amount uh, and they show up if there's video sources like if there's no music sources this doesn't show up and it just shows video and so on um, the room list and sources this room list automatically gets populated and as you can see there's uh, volume control and uh, power control from right inside the room select menu so you don't have to keep switching rooms has sleep timers and share sources and the share sources is pretty clever too because it's not just a generic um, click share sources and the short source you're on you can just click any room it actually loads a list with the so uh, rooms that that source exists on so if you're on cable room or sorry if you're on cable box one and that's available in no other rooms you hit share sources it's not going to show any rooms however if you're on uh, like uh, the Chromecast and you hit share sources and any other room with that same Chromecast as an available source will show up so it's fairly clever, I, I, at least I think. Uh, the timer, um, which there's other things that can happen with the timer too, like it can put your whole house to sleep and so on, but that's for another video. Um, there's uh, morning alarms, um, and you can choose a source. Like actually, um, it makes more sense to kind of do this. So this is the running program right here. So this is the room list here, as you see. There's the master, uh, let's just go to the gym here. Uh, because that's actually my bedroom right now, but that's besides the point. Uh, here's the alarm. So here you can set the alarm time and the snooze time and so on and the days of the week. Um, AV uh, sources, you can select what turns on. So I have it turning on to XM radio, but you can set it to whatever you want. Um, you can also do TV, so it turns on to the TV sources in the morning. It's up to you. Um, there's a startup volume and a dual stage volume. As you're adjusting these, if you have music playing in the room, it will adjust on the fly so you can hear how loud it is at the, while setting these volumes. And the dual stage works like when it uh, works like the uh, the room first turns on when the alarm goes off, it goes to this volume. After 10 minutes, it goes to this volume, so it kind of just helps wake you up. I'm terrible waking up, so I figured that's kind of cool. Lighting can do the same thing. So this is kind of the same thing, uh, whereas it will turn on to this light scene and then um, and then after 10 minutes it'll go to full here you can do instant lights delayed lights so here you can have it um, after 10 minutes turn on full or go to a scene same same exact thing except for the instant light uh, like instant rate when the uh, alarm goes off but I like this one right here um, and that's just one example of many of the features and oh and the uh, quick lighting here so you can see here um, without having to go here um, and select lights and go to the room and turn it off and all that stuff just to adjust the lights in the room you're watching you can go here turn on the lights and now the lights are on in the uh, gym and say with the shades here's the shades and I can go close the shades in the room without having to go to the shade section and so on so it just makes quick access for the lights and shades and also that whole thing um, with the alarm that's attached to it too so it knows how to adjust the shades and also here you can have a turn on source so better example would be the bathroom it has light so I actually have this set so uh, it, when it's on and off uh, sorry when uh, when they turn on and off the lights it turns on an extra radio so and when you leave the bathroom it just turns it off so it's automatic you don't have to do anything you don't have to touch the touch panel or anything um, so anyways there's the sources here as you can see it auto populates if I go to the family room you can see there's no audio sources it's just these guys here so really it's very as you can see very very little effort this minute or this video is just over 30 minutes long and most of it's just me rambling on so you honestly could do this system which was a six multi room um, uh, six room multi room system and um, one AV, AV room and like 20 25 minutes and, and everything's done on the interface uh, 
and um, and you're done. You just go away, and as long as the devices are listening to you, um, everything should just work right off the bat. The one thing I'll go into just briefly is the um, the touch or the touch panel slash remote. I guess they're both remotes, but um, so here is the HR150. As you can see, it's just generic uh, commands here, and they all go to a module for remote. So here, once again, a specific control ID. There's the remote control IDs. Here you choose the functions of the um, the, the miscellaneous. So here's the miscellaneous here. So like on my room, I have the first button going to the media player one, and Apple TV, and so on. Then I have page up, page down. Uh, auxiliary six, which is um, auxiliary six, uh, six of a certain function, and sleep timer on. Uh, so I have a sleep timer right on the remote, and the, all the the inputs for the remote go here. There's some custom commands here, so you can just literally hook it into whatever you'd want to do. You have just a normal press tapped and held, um, and you would just like if function nine, if it existed on this remote, you can just go right down to the bottom and choose one of the customs. So you can do whatever you want there as well. For the TSR it's pretty much done. It's exactly like the other touch panels. So here, the AV management, it's done. That's remote one. It's getting the default room list. Everything's uh, filled out automatically in terms of signal routing here, just like all the other interfaces, and it's just done. And so really, once you get the core part of the, uh, the devices working, the displays and stuff, and it's working, adding remotes and um, duplicating displays and putting in extra iPad projects or touch panels or whatever is literally just copy and pasting and just setting the control ID specific for the interface and obviously doing the room list if you want it to be something different. So um, I hope you enjoyed uh, this video and uh, if you're interested in uh, licensing out these modules for your own work um, just uh, email me at uh, dave at automationpro.ca so um, I'll try to get some more of these videos out because the lighting is just as easy as you can see here. I'm not going to go into it, but it's Lighting Rooms Manager. Uh, the keypads have a link. Uh, that's a bad example. At least there's nothing there. Um, simple link to the lighting room so you don't even have to control like when the button's tapped, it toggles and then you hold it dim or whatever. The button functions are down here and you can choose from on, off, toggle, raise, lower, exit, sleep, on, off, whatever, or custom. It's the same thing with the remote, there's custom there. But we'll get into that later uh, because it's very simplistic and even a lighting system can be done in virtually no time. That's it for this tutorial. Thank you for watching and feel free to check out my other tutorials that will be popping up over time as well as some other cool videos I'll be posting in the near future. If you are interested in licensing out my program and modules, contact me with the email address on the screen for information.